beautiful people. I'm May and I just talk about the things I like. Thank you guys so much for over 100 subscribers. Like it may seem small to some people, but it's a huge achievement for me. And you guys also got my previous videos over 1000 views. Like I'm in such awe. Like you guys are so amazing. Thank you so much. Anyways, today we are establishing and redesigning Adrian Agrest and Nino Laif. Apparently it's not Laif. <laughs> Apparently it's not. Anyways, so this is the third part of this six part series. Before we get to the redesign, let's talk about Adrian's and Nino's friendship real fast. Just like with Chloe and Lila, I wanted to rewatch the episodes where Nino and Adrian have a chance in the spotlight. Now, with some of the episodes, we see Nino's and Adrian's friendship, but we don't really see what makes them friends compared to Alia and Marinette. In fact, we don't really see much of Adrian's friendships with his other classmates. The only friendship that Adrian has a close bond with is with his own Kwame. Adrian's relationship with Plague is more expanded on and we get to see how these two get along. You know what, I retract my previous statement. Another strong bond Adrian has is with Ladybug, but only as Cat Noir. Despite these two not knowing much about each other, they still have a good bond. So with Nino, we do see him and Adrian getting along very well, but what exactly strengthens their bond? What makes them friends? Let's talk about the vulnerability in their relationship. Adrian isn't as open to Nino as Nino is to Adrian. For example, Adrian hasn't told Nino about his crush on Ladybug, nor has he told anyone. The only people to find out were Lila and Felix, but that's because the two are not idiots like the rest of the cast. When it came to Kagami, Adrian was the one to tell Marinette and ask for her advice on where he could take Kagami on a date. Adrian has not gone to Nino about any of his issues. Adrian's problem with his father is barely an exception because that's public information. Also, remember that Adrian went to Marinette about not wanting to be a model anymore. He did not go and tell his so-called best friend. And he has even said that if he told anyone how he felt, they would not listen to him. And I beg to differ. As we see with both Alia and Adrian, Nino is very much a caring and protective friend. Nino went as far as to try to convince Mr. Pinhead Larry here to let Adrian have a freaking birthday party in the bubbler. In Anansi, even though Nino is not the strongest character, he immediately sprung into action to save his precious queen before earning the turtle miraculous. And not to mention, he managed to get himself and all the other guys into the aggressed mansion just for Adrian to have his first hangout with his friends in his own home in Party Crasher. And it has been revealed that Nino feels guilty that he can't help Adrian with his overprotective father in Guilt Trip. So for Adrian to say that no one would understand his problems is a huge understatement and a slap to Nino's face. Especially in the season four episode, Risk, in the scene where Marinette is talking to Nino, Alia, Rose, and Kim in the cafeteria to devise a way to save Adrian from going on a voyage around the world, no one believed Marinette and for valid reasons. But let me remind you, Nino was the first to say, if Adrian didn't want to be a model anymore, he would have told me since I am his best bud. Nino, you might want to rethink your friendship real fast. And on top of that, Adrian wouldn't even know Nino's reaction because he doesn't talk to Nino about his issues. Nino, on the other hand, constantly goes to Adrian about his problems, as we see in Annie Man, where he wanted to ask Marinette out on a date, and Rocketeer, where he believed Alia was falling for Cat Noir and also revealed his secret identity to Adrian. I am not saying Adrian has to talk to Nino. If Adrian does not want to open up to Nino, that is his decision. But for someone he calls his best friend, he treats Nino as if he's an acquaintance. And because we don't get many deep interactions with these two, Nino went from Adrian's bestie to just Alia's boyfriend. Like, that's literally it. Nino just, Nino has so much potential and I only hope to see him grow. When I say I want justice for a character or I want them to grow, I 100% mean it because there is a lot of lost potential in some of these characters. It's not even funny. Anyways, let's start with Adrian's redesign. All right, so we all know that the show's title is called Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, but for the majority of the series, we see life from Marinette's perspective which is fine, 
but I feel like we should see Adrian's perspective more than Marinette's in the show. The main reason being that Adrian is the direct link to the main antagonist and the main plot of the show. But because the show likes to glorify Marinette and keep her in the spotlight, Adrian barely gets the attention he needs for his own character growth, which makes it harder to find episodes that mainly focus on Adrian, other than him appearing as Cat Noir or as Marinette's big fat crush. But how do I feel about Adrian Agreste overall? I would have to say I do like the potential of his character, but sometimes I feel like I barely know anything about Adrian. Yeah, I know some things about his character, but I feel like I should know more about him since he appears in every single episode. Like, I know he's a model, the son of Gabriel Agreste, he's cat noir, he's allergic to feathers, he's rich, he's secretive, he has a crush on Ladybug, he has an overprotective and neglectful father, and his mom has disappeared, he's voiced by frickin' Bryce Pappenbrook. But even though I know the basics of his character, I feel like I don't know him as well as the other characters. Maybe I'm just being dramatic. Look, I am not saying that Adrian is a bad character or anything like that, but I am going to say that he has a lot of wasted potential and I hope Adrian gets the character growth in season 5. But anyways, let's get on to the redesign. Alright, so for Adrian's design, I wanted to take a different approach to his style and give him more of a soft boy look. Adrian already has a basic casual style in the show and I think it fits him. The upper class characters in Miraculous don't necessarily dress rich if you think about it. Maybe they wear something formal, but still look casual in a way. And another reason why I'm going for a casual look for Adrian's design is, well, of course he's going to college and because he's not going to be modeling every 10 seconds. I also wanted to give him a golden retriever look to differentiate him from Cat Noir and also to help bring out his personality a bit. I gave him curly hair to match the coat of a golden retriever to give him more of a friendly appearance. Since I wanted Adrian to have that soft boy look, I gave him a sweater that goes over his dress shirt and paired it with some jeans. And on his sweater, which was suggested by my best friend, shout out to the bestie, I added a little embroidered cat on Adrian's sweater, not to represent his role as Cat Noir, but to pay a little homage to his mother, which will be explained in his backstory. In Miraculous, Adrian's backstory is pretty vague. Of course, we get little hints about what makes Adrian act or behave the way he does, but I feel like it's pretty basic, especially when it comes to his relationship with his parents, which isn't really explained other than Gabriel being neglectful. And of course, with the senti monster theory flying around, there are so many other possibilities with Adrian's backstory, but this is what I came up with. Adrian Agreste was miraculously born to the famous fashion designer Gabriel Agreste and his wife Emily Agreste, despite the fact that Emily could not bear any children. All through Adrian's life, he has been stuck in his home. The only times he was able to go out was when his parents took him out to fashion events and when he attended clubs that were handpicked by Gabriel, those being fencing club and piano practice. At the age of nine, Adrian would start modeling for the Agreste brand alongside his mother. Adrian would do homeschooling with Natalie and would do language classes with her as well. Adrian was close to most of the adults in his life. Adrian was close to his father, but they didn't spend time together due to Adrian's father being busy with his fashion agency. On the days his father wasn't busy, the two would go to museums to find inspiration for Gabriel's work or to musical concerts. Basically places that Gabriel found educational for Adrian or helpful towards anything inspirational but Adrian was closer to his mother than any other person. When Adrian was not homeschooling with Natalie, modeling, or at any of his clubs, Adrian and his mother would walk through the gardens in the Agreste mansion. There, Emily would tell Adrian stories about superheroes, a prince saving the damsel in distress, you name it. The two would spend hours playing in the garden, and they would sometimes be visited by a black cat. Adrian was scared of cats since his mother would tell stories about evil witches and cursed black cats but his mother loved cats dearly. She would show Adrian how nice the cat was and taught him how to be brave. Although it took some time, he started to play with the cat as well. Eventually, he would come back with his mom to feed the cat. Adrian would even make his mother drawings of cats just to make her smile on the days she seemed sad or just to see her happy. During Adrian's sophomore year of high school, he would meet Chloe at a fashion event. Chloe being Adrian's first friend, they would spend time together at the Agreste mansion. The only reason why Chloe was allowed in the mansion was because Gabriel was friends with her father. The two became very close quickly, 
Adrian would listen to Chloe's troubles and stories in high school. Adrian would dream about going to school in person, but knew his father wouldn't allow him to. Emily would start to get sick within the same year. Over the months, it seemed that she was getting worse and worse. Adrian would try his best to help his mother and keep her company on the days he was free. But in his junior year of high school, Adrian's mother would tragically pass away. Emily's passing impacted the family deeply. Adrian would try to go to his father for comfort, but his father would become cold and distant. As comfort and a way to mourn, Adrian would still visit the garden and play with the black cat. But eventually, Gabriel would block the entrance to the garden with the statue of Emily, causing Adrian to not only lose the place his mother and him cherished, but also the cat that would play with him on the days he was sad. Chloe was a source of comfort during this hard time. Though he would spend hours crying on Chloe's shoulder, he wouldn't talk to Chloe about his grief or to anyone. His relationship with his father would continue to decline. Over time, it would even come to the point where Adrian had to make appointments just to talk to his dad. Even during photo shoots, his father would no longer be present. His relationship with his father seemed nothing more than just being business partners. Gabriel demanded that Adrian would be excellent in all his clubs, be perfect with his schoolwork, and be great as a model, and do everything Gabriel asked of him, and Adrian would always obey. When it was time to apply for college, Adrian would be convinced to ask his father about attending school in person by Chloe. Adrian would start to beg his father to let him go in person. At first, Gabriel would deny Adrian's request, but eventually, he would allow Adrian to go to college, but only at the university Chloe was attending and if he joined a fencing team. Although Adrian was surprised, he was happy to finally do whatever he wanted, but because he always did what his father wanted him to do, nor did he ever have the chance to explore who he was, Adrian had no idea who or what he wanted to be. In the university, Adrian has an undecided major and is focusing on his basics, and he also becomes a star member of the fencing team. At the university, he meets Marinette, Nino, Alia, and the other characters. Adrian's personality is going to be a bit different in my rewrite. Since Adrian was able to interact with Chloe, but only for a small part of his life, Adrian will still be a bit socially awkward when interacting with people his age. Adrian is still going to be oblivious, specifically towards his own romantic feelings and the people who give him signs of any romantic attraction. In the show, Marinette and Adrian are shown to be opposites that work really well together, literally Ladybug and Cat Noir. But I noticed in a way that the two are very quick to fall in love. I wanted there to be a bit of a difference in that as well. Marinette in my rewrite will still be the one who likes Adrian at first glance since she is the hopeless romantic type. And Adrian being oblivious to his own feelings will take a while to realize he has feelings for Ladybug. Adrian also takes a while to talk about any issue he faces. But with enough trust and security depending on the person, Adrian will be more vulnerable. And lastly, Adrian is going to be very caring and generous, just like a prince. All right, I'm going to keep it short in this segment. So for Cat Noir's redesign, I was inspired by Bunny Noir, which we see in the first episode of season five and Catwalker's design. I wanted to mix Cat Noir's and Catwalker's design while also incorporating green into his suit. I loved how Cat Walker's design wasn't all black compared to Cat Noir's design, so I made Cat Noir's torso and below a dark gray to help make that black in a suit pop. I also gave him shaggy and a bit poofy hair to differentiate his tamed curly hair. Okay, so for Cat Noir's powers, I have a serious question. Can Cat Noir cataclysm in Akuma and also purify the victim? Because we have seen Cat Noir straight up destroy Akuma in Cat Blanc, but the Akuma was about to Akumatize Marinette. It wasn't in an object or anything like that. So from my understanding, after the object that held the Akuma is broken, the Akumatized victim is still affected until Ladybug purifies the Akuma. So what would happen if in that scenario, instead of Ladybug purifying the Akuma, Cat Noir destroys it? Would the Akumatized victim still be Akumatized or would they go back to normal? I don't know, it's just a fun thing to think about. But for the sake of my redesign, Cat Noir can't purify an Akuma, but he can destroy the Akuma, which will cure the Akumatized victim. Man, I said Akuma too much. So if Ladybug can't show up or is in a situation with the villain, Cat Noir can handle the situation himself. 
In the show, I would love to see an episode where it is Cat Noir saving the day without Ladybug's help. The only time we get to see that is in Party Crasher and Hawkson, but in those episodes, it seems like Cat Noir needs Ladybug or someone with the Ladybug Miraculous to save his behind, despite Ladybug not even needing Cat Noir to save the day in some episodes. I also want to bring back Cat Noir's night vision and super hearing in my redesign, since this would make Cat Noir more alert and careful compared to his partner in certain situations. And because in my rewrite the characters are adults, Cat Noir will have unlimited usage of his powers, but any damage made by his cataclysm would be permanent. When Adrian is Cat Noir, it gives him the freedom to be whoever he wants. He is outgoing and likes to mess around. In battle, he is much more serious and alert. Because Ladybug and Cat Noir are equals, Cat Noir also comes up with plans to defeat the villain. With his crush on Ladybug, he quietly admires her and flirts with her occasionally, but not during a battle. Alright, we gotta talk about the Love Square. If you don't know what exactly the Love Square is, it's basically four ships between two people disguised as other people. I'm not even joking. I remember in middle school, a lot of people were talking about which ship from the Love Square was the best, but I was sitting there confused because it's literally the same two people in different pairings. In the Love Square, we have Adrian and Marinette, Marinette and Cat Noir, Ladybug and Adrian, and Ladybug and Cat Noir. Now, personally, I can understand the importance of the Love Square since it gives more insight into the characters' romantic and platonic relationships with each other. But picking out a ship and rooting for one, I don't really understand. But hey, if you like one of the ships from the Love Square, I'm not judging you at all, nor am I going to convince you otherwise. But within each of the four pairings, we get a different type of chemistry. I just really wanted to talk about the Love Square and share my opinions, and maybe you guys have the same thoughts I do. Alright, so we should all know about this pairing. It's the main one that is desired in the show, or at least the main one that's being showcased in the show. Marinette has a crush on Adrian, well, Adrian does not reciprocate the feeling, making it one-sided. But because of this ship, we see a lot of Marinette's creepy, stalking behavior, which is very sad in my opinion. I feel like the only thing that makes this pairing great is the times when Adrian makes Marinette flustered, or if Marinette manages to talk to Adrian without stuttering. Now, I will say this, when it comes to Marinette and her actions towards Adrian, sometimes it frustrates me when Marinette's stuttering and extreme clumsiness are excessive and in a way hinders the progress of Marinette's and Adrian's relationship. Although I do understand Marinette, sometimes for some people, we may like someone so much to the point we can't talk to them because we're so nervous and afraid of messing up. I mean, I had a crush on a guy in my early high school years, so much so that I absolutely could not talk to him. Now, granted, this was a far-sighted crush, so I didn't know him, and he was the one that got away. Seriously, he transferred schools the next semester. But because I was so head over heels for this guy, I couldn't even manage to say hi to him because I was so nervous. So I can understand Marinette's feelings when she can't talk to Adrian or struggles to form her sentences, but I will not accept all the cringy and idiotic things she's done in the name of love. Another thing that irritates me is the fact that it seemed like Marinette was going to make progress when it came to talking to Adrian, but in season three, it, it seemed like she just reverted back to her old ways. And then of course, adding Luca into the mix just made everything more complicated because all Luca could say is, you're still thinking about Adrian, aren't you? Which which confirmed Marinette shouldn't be playing with Lucas' feelings like that, but I, uh, you know, gotta leave that for his redesign video. Anyways, back to Adrian and Marinette. Another thing I really don't like about this ship is the number of times the show reminds you how much Marinette and Adrian are meant for each other, but turns around and dedicates a whole what if episode in our face just to tell us not yet, like Mariah Carey when it's about to be Christmas. Not yet. But I should elaborate on this. We have seen multiple times throughout the series where the show teases Marinette and Adrian as a couple, whether it be cute moments that don't really add to their friendship but are just there to make a scream in victory, or specifically when Adrian and Marinette get together but then everything is erased due to a certain circumstance like Oblivio or Cat Blanc and Ephemeral. Now, don't get me wrong, 
I still want Adrian and Marinette to get together, but I wish the relationship between Adrian and Marinette had a lot more going on than just Marinette coming up with big schemes to talk to Adrian or any other shenanigans. Can we please get an episode where Marinette and Adrian just sit down and have a conversation? It was episodes like Gorazilla where Adrian and Marinette are hiding from Adrian's fans, the two spend time together, and we get some type of progression in their friendship. But in my opinion, I feel like the two could be a lot closer. I feel like Adrian barely knows Marinette besides her being easily flustered, and Marinette knows nothing about Adrian besides his life schedule. So if we had more episodes where the two spend time together and have actual progression in their relationship, I feel like when Marinette and Adrian get together, it's going to be worthwhile and satisfying, not something that's shoved down your throat. So Marinette and Cat Noir, in my opinion, is the second most desired ship. In this pairing, Marinette and Cat Noir do not have any feelings for each other. I do like the chemistry in this pairing. Marinette gets to know and understand a different side of Cat Noir, and Cat Noir gets to know a different side of Marinette. The only episodes that we get to see any type of development with this pairing are The Evillustrator, Glaciator 1 and 2, and Where Dad. In those episodes, we get to see the sensitive sides of both characters. It just feels very natural when these two are able to talk and get to know each other on a personal level. We even get a better understanding of why Marinette acts the way she does when Adrian is around, and why Cat Noir can't stop confessing his love to Ladybug. I feel like if we get more episodes focused on Marinette and Cat Noir, by the time the reverse love square kicks in, Marinette and Cat Noir developing feelings for each other wouldn't feel forced compared to Adrian and Marinette becoming a couple. Ladybug and Cat Noir I would say is the third most desired ship. This pairing focuses on Ladybug and Cat Noir. Now, just like with Adrian and Marinette, this is also a one-sided crush situation, except it's Cat Noir that has a crush on Ladybug. Ladybug and Cat Noir work really well as teammates. They have this unbreakable bond and have a lot of trust in each other. Although in season four, we see that bond quake for a bit. Cat Noir's crush on Ladybug is so big that he always has to remind her how much he loves her, which can sometimes be annoying. Cat Noir has flirted hard with Ladybug and she does reject him in some scenarios. But you wanna know what my problem is with this? Ladybug sometimes flirts back. And I just feel like that is so hypocritical of her. It would have been one thing if Ladybug stopped flirting with Cat Noir after he confessed, or if Cat Noir never confessed to Ladybug and she just took it as friendly banter. But Ladybug, you can't tell Cat Noir that you don't want to lead him on. You don't accept his love confessions. You are in love with someone else, but then flirt with him. And then also get jealous when Cat Noir stops calling you Bugaboo or shows interest in another character, specifically Ryoko and Volpina. Which also adds to hypocrisy in season 4 when Cat Noir gets jealous of the other heroes and feels replaced. I need to calm down. Listen, I am not saying flirting means you are interested in someone, but think of it this way. You like someone. You both are flirting and it seems like they are interested in you. You muster up the courage and confess your heart out to this person and then they tell you they like someone else. You're sad, you evaluate your feelings, but at the end of the day, you understand and decide to be friends. Now imagine if the same person starts flirting with you again. You get your hopes up and confess again and then they say no again and then the cycle just repeats. You would feel awful and confused because the person is playing with your feeling. And that's what I feel Ladybug is doing with Cat Noir. There is constant flirting, a confession, and a rejection. But I will defend Ladybug when Cat Noir oversteps a boundary. If you try to make a move on someone and they reject you, do not continue any flirtatious actions. It's as simple as that. But anyways, Cat Noir and Ladybug work best as a team, but for now, they should put their romance drama aside because season 4 was a huge mess in that area and focus more on building trust. And lastly, we have Ladybug and Adrian, which in my opinion is the least desired ship. I don't know, I just barely see anything revolving Ladybug and Adrian in the show, and nor do I even see like the Ladrian shippers, like where are y'all at? In this pairing, both Adrian and Ladybug have feelings for each other, which you would think the ship has sailed, everything's great. No, no it's not. These two barely have any chemistry together besides Ladybug saving the damsel in distress, which is Adrian, or just awkward tension. I feel like there is a lot of lost potential in this pairing, and sometimes I do forget this pairing exists because it's not explored enough. The only episode that gives Ladybug and Adrian that attention is Desperata, but nah, it still didn't really do anything. 
But don't get me wrong, I feel like the awkward tension in Ladybug saving Adrian in certain situations does work, but it can be expanded on. Maybe Adrian confesses his feelings to Ladybug, but Ladybug would have to turn him down due to her job as a superhero. Or maybe they both know they like each other but they won't act on it, hence why we would have Cat Noir trying to get Ladybug to fall for him and Marinette trying to get Adrian to fall for her. With Adrian's design out of the way, let's move on to Nino. Alright, I pretty much said a lot about Nino and Adrian's friendship earlier in this video, but I never said my actual thoughts on him. <laughs> Guys, I freaking love Nino. Now I wouldn't say he's my favorite character in Miraculous, my favorite being Milan, but he is definitely high on my list of favorites. As I said earlier, he has a really caring soul and would do anything to help his friends. With his relationship with Alia, you could tell that he has so much love for her. But we gotta talk about Rocketeer because Nino had some troubles in that episode. So in Rocketeer, Alia has to keep her new identity as Rena Furtive a secret and everyone else has to believe that the Fox Miraculous does not have a holder anymore, including Nino. Later in that episode, Alia will start exhibiting some weird behaviors. Since Nino and Alia share everything, it's natural for Nino to feel like something is wrong. But here's where people were not happy with Nino. Instead of talking to Alia, he just spies on Alia late at night and records her and Cat Noir talking on the balcony. Now, I can understand how this can make someone uncomfortable. Although I do not condone this behavior, I do understand where Nino is coming from. Remind you that earlier in that episode, he was telling Adrian that he believes Alia was in love with someone else. But because Adrian didn't believe him, Nino wanted to get evidence to prove himself right. Hence why he was recording Alia in the first place. Again, I am not condoning this behavior. You should not stalk your lovers. But understand that Nino is a 14 year old middle schooler. He is bound to do something dumb. Just like Marinette, even though the fandom can be harsh on her character, at the end of the day, she's still a 14 year old middle schooler who is going to make mistakes. I do agree that Nino should have just talked to Alia in the first place, but she was acting sketchy. Of course, Nino felt like Alia was not going to tell him what's going on, so he went and did the next best thing and investigated. It's literally the same behavior of those catching a cheater test videos. Is it right? Not really, but there is some sympathy towards the person because there's a reason why they might want to put their partner through a test. But towards the end of the episode, the problem is resolved because Alia just tells Nino about her new role as Rena Furtive, which I feel like she was valid to tell Nino this information. Not just because they are together, but because Ladybug was the one who revealed their identities to each other in the first place. Now, yes, she can take back her word. She is the Guardian. But Marinette should already understand that Nino and Alia share everything together. Revealing Alia and Nino's identities to each other was a mistake Ladybug made. Because if Ladybug didn't give Alia and Nino their miraculouses at the same time, Nino wouldn't have found out about Alia's secret identity as Rena Furtive, and Alia wouldn't have been able to really confirm Nino's identity as Carapace, and Rocketeer would not have happened. I would even say Alia and Nino learning about their secret identities helped strengthen their relationship. For Marina to tell Alia to lie to her boyfriend, in my opinion, she is both right and wrong. Especially because Marinette is the biggest hypocrite in this situation. Marinette, the person who guarded her secret identity from everyone for so long. The minute she became the guardian of the miraculous, the person whose identity must be kept a secret. Who did she freaking tell? Alia Cesare. I know the roles are different between these two, but Marinette really shouldn't be saying anything. Like, girl. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to Nino's redesign before I get too riled up. So as we know with Nino and Alia, they are both the black best friends of the main characters. But while I do these redesigns, I like to confirm each character's ethnicity so that I can represent them in the best way possible. To confirm Nino's ethnicity, I of course looked it up. On the Miraculous Wiki, it is said that Nino is Moroccan French. Morocco is located in the northwest corner of Africa, so I just assumed that Nino was indeed a black character. 
But while researching Morocco and the population of the ethnic groups, the people of Morocco are primarily Arabs and I'm going to try my best to pronounce this, but the Amazur with other minority ethnic groups. And from my understanding, based on the research I made, there are dark-skinned Moroccans and also Moroccans with African or black features. But take what I am saying with a grain of salt. But in my redesign, Mino is black Moroccan French. And most importantly, if you know anything about Morocco and the culture, feel free to tell me in the comments and correct me if I made a mistake. So. For Nino's redesign, I was actually inspired by my older brother, specifically how he dresses. Now my brother wouldn't exactly wear what Nino is wearing in my design, but it's somewhat close to his style. I found this outfit on Pinterest, here's the reference. I also gave Nino locks, facial, and arm hair. I took a note that Nino said he always wanted a mustache in Rocketeer, and I took it a step further. And lastly, I just updated Nino's headphones, making them red instead of blue. And for Nino's shoes, let me just say, Nino has some killer shoes. I'm not arguing with anyone. He has the best shoes in the series. But in my redesign, I gave him shoes based on the Air Force One Jordans my brother has and used it as a reference and added red and black for the accent colors. All right, so with Nino, not only did I want to give him a backstory, but I wanted to give him something to relate to Adrian and strengthen their bond, and also give more insight on Alia and Nino's relationship. So this is what I came up with. For the majority of his life, it has always been just Nino, his mother, and his father. The three were extremely close. Nino's mother and father would always spend time with him, take him on family trips, and did their best to raise him to be a respectable young man. In middle school, Nino's mother would become pregnant. Nino was ecstatic to hear this news. Nino would do his best to help his mother out by doing the chores around the house. Nino and his father would even bake goodies for his mother and overall treated her like a queen. But when it was time for Nino's mother to deliver her newborn child, there were complications. Nino's baby brother would be born, but his mother sadly was never able to meet her newborn child. The passing of his mother was the hardest thing Nino and his father had to go through but his father was there for him to be his shoulder to lean on. Despite being a single parent, Nino's father gave his sons the support and love they needed and provided a very happy childhood. Nino would make music to cope with his mother's passing and to help express his emotions. In his early high school years, he would befriend Ivan, Max, Kim, and his other friends. He would also start to make house music and would become a well-known disc jockey and did gigs in public and private events. Even though he loved being a DJ, to Nino, it was more of a side hustle and a hobby. Nino still wanted to explore exactly what he wanted to do in life. For fun, he would join the film club in his school. He would make scripts, direct scenes, and help edit videos for the club. Nino was happy to be doing all these things and eventually found a passion in becoming a filmmaker and a screenwriter. In his junior year of high school, he would finally meet Alia and Marinette through Ivan since he was dating Milen. Although he had a small crush on Marinette at first, he was content with just being her friend and eventually got over his crush on her. Over time, he would get acquainted with Alia, but they still didn't know much about each other. Until one night, Nino had a gig at a private event and was able to invite his friends, giving them all tickets. All his friends were busy with other things and were not able to attend. Although sad, Nino was understanding. At the event, when Nino was about to start his set, he spotted a familiar girl in the crowd. He saw Alia smiling right at him. Although shocked, he felt a sense of warmth in her eyes and in her smile. After the event was over, Nino and Alia would finally talk for the first time, getting to know more about each other. The two would spend a lot of time together, eventually becoming inseparable. It was until the end of Nino's junior year that he realized he had feelings for Alia, though he was very shy to tell her how he felt. Over summer break, Nino would spend time with his friends, but Alia would be the person he spent time with the most. He desperately wanted to tell her how much he liked her, but his nervousness would always get in the way. During Nino's senior year, one day after school, he would walk Alia home. During this walk, Alia and Nino would take a detour to the zoo, and there, Alia would confess her feelings for Nino. Nino was surprised, but he was extremely happy, and of course, told her he liked her back. That day, the two would become an official couple. Nino in my AU aspires to be a famous screenwriter and filmmaker, 
since he goes to the same university as the other characters, Nino majors in film studies. Nino's personality in my redesign is going to remain relatively the same, but Nino is more chill and isn't as obvious when it comes to secrets. He also gives insightful advice, especially to Adrian, and is the shoulder that anyone could cry on. He treats Alia like royalty and does everything in his power to make her happy and their relationship healthy. For Carapace's redesign, I was very inspired by multiple things. Even though I've never seen any of these shows, I've had people in my life talk about how much they watched and enjoyed the shows. But anyways, I was inspired by Lloyd from Lego Ninjago, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and The Green Arrow, with Carapace's new suit being heavily inspired by The Green Arrow. I wanted to give Carapace a suit that would bring out his personality, but also something that would look modern. To break the full leather suit, I just gave Carapace short sleeves. Inspired by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I also gave Carapace a chest plate to represent the plastron of a turtle. So when Carapace places his shield behind him, he gets that full turtle look. Carapace will be the last hero that will be able to keep his miraculous. Carapace's role is to help Ladybug and Cat Noir fight Akumatai's villains when he is needed. He is also a part of Rena Rouge's investigation group. In the group, Carapace uses his power to protect himself, Rena Rouge, and Queen Bee. He also uses his power to trap enemies in his protective dome. When he is not helping with the investigations, Carapace helps with small dangers and petty crimes around Paris. This is the final look for Adrian Agrest, Cat Noir, Nina Laif, and Carapace. I am really happy how this turned out, especially because I haven't drawn male characters in a while. I feel like this is a personal improvement and I can't wait to learn and do more. But if you like this video and if you're interested in this series, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, the art from this video will be posted onto my Instagram, so go ahead and give me a follow. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.